from uh, Steven's interview. You're uh, fired I'm about Tank, down. about Ryan. Just just go ahead, say your piece. No, now I'm going to calm it down. No, no, no. Now I'm going to calm it down. down. You know, Come on. all I'm saying, <laughs> man. <laughs> hey, I was surprised that Ryan called you out. Like, genuinely surprised. Like, were you surprised? No, I'm not, man. I mean, I am the king, bro. The king stays king. You know what I mean? I mean, how are they going to go to the next level? All these guys want these major endorsement deals and sponsors. They're not just going to get it with the amount of followers they have. They have to show the, they have to show it in the ring. So you got to face some guys like me or Lomachenko or so on and so forth. <laughs> I mean, like, it's just, it's just common sense, bro. If you guys are in the business, of, if you guys are in the sport of boxing, then you should know the business of boxing. You know what I mean? It's common sense. Like, uh, I just thank God that I am who I am and the way I am. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't get myself in trouble outside of the ring. I don't look for trouble. You know what I mean? I was married. Now I'm divorced. So we just moving forward from it. Do you feel that that's the natural fight that happens next? Is you and Ryan, given that Oscar's going to be uh, at the fight this weekend? Who? Uh, given that Oscar's going to be at the fight this weekend, do you think you and Ryan is like the next natural like fight to make? Uh, you know, something like, I look at it like this. When we talk about business, that could be a publicity stunt to keep Ryan up in the feeds. You know what I'm saying? You know, my fight's coming up. Everybody's watching me. You know, come on, guys. You got to think outside the box. So I ain't going to believe it until I see it on contract. You know, and in the meantime, let's talk about Pedro Campa. Let's talk about the guy that I'm facing actually this Saturday. You know, Ryan Garcia did his thing. Tank did his thing against Roley. Um, so those guys are in the back right now. You know, this is my time, my time to shine. I'm not going to give all that to Ryan Garcia. Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? It's just really, that's how I feel. Y'all ain't going to play me. Uh-uh. Not anymore. So do you feel that that's all it is? It's just a publicity stunt? Just they see you fighting and they just want to keep their name in there? Like, you, you think he's not serious about a fight with you or with Tank? No. Not at all. I don't know about Tank. You know what I'm saying? That's on that side. However, on my side, you ain't going to play me like that. You know what I mean? But, hey, I appreciate uh, appreciate Oscar De La Hoya, man. He's always been a great sport, great champion. He's my champion, really. Um, you know, I was uh, I just thought about him and uh, two weeks or three weeks ago before uh, he announced that he was coming to my fight and told him that he's more than welcome. I would love to have him around. I have front row tickets. I mean, I spent $50,000 on tickets alone. Why? Huh? Why? Because you got to invest. You gotta, you got, how does, how does a business grow? How does takeover promotions grow? How does all these things grow? You gotta spend money to make it. You gotta spend a little bit. You gotta invest on the thing. So I believe in myself so much. I'll spend 50 grand of tickets so that I give it out to the people, give it out to family and friends, give it out to all the celebrities, all the people that I'm, in, I'm inviting to, to Saturday night. You know what I'm saying? Because that's a business move. That is something that I'm, I'm not here just for now. I'm here for the longevity part. I'm here to uh, help my sport. I'm here to uh, fix the corruption that's happening in my sport. You know what I'm saying? Even if, it, if I fix about 25% of it, that quarter is going to help this new generation of kids that are coming up on the horizon. You know, it's all about taking care of them, man. Whether I talk my shit or not, ain't nobody could do a damn thing about it. Can't nobody do a damn thing about it. You know why? You know why? Because I have God with me, always. With God, all things are possible. And everybody knows, man, the prophecies of everything. You can't break that. You can't break that. Well, everything that matters is what I do come Saturday night. Speaking of, of Saturday night, it's been nine months uh, since uh, we've seen you in the ring. Uh, I, I've been seeing uh, your clips on social media. You look very, very focused. And I also think, too, maybe like there's a part of you that, uh, I don't know if it's like anger or you just want to show people, like, hey, I'm still here. I'm still that beast. Don't take what happened in the last fight and, and make that think uh, of the, the last image of me coming into this fight. No, no, no. I don't really care what the people say. I don't. I don't care. They're always going to talk, right? Whether it's good, bad, they're still talking about Teofimo Lopez. So that's how we pushing that move. You know what I mean? Gordo got everybody on a new wave. Hey, Gordo got everybody on the wave. So it's all about, and you know what? I think the part is this, that a lot of people don't kind of quite, you know, um, want to really take into consideration or take into themselves because so much ego that gets involved. It's this. You guys all talk a lot. But where is your work ethic? Where is your stuff at? What is your things that you guys are doing in your life? I mean, shit, that's why we are separate. There is a, there is a yin and there is a yang. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's why I was blessed enough. And, and not even that, I worked my ass off to get to where I'm at today. You know, the people that talk down on all of us is because they never did shit in their life. And they want to bring everybody down. Look, negative vibes, man, they try to bring you around because they got, they got nowhere to go. You know, positive vibes, they know where they're heading. They know where they're going. So it's all about pushing that, uh, pushing that needle, man, and uh, putting my foot on everyone's neck and holding it. 
This time we're gonna we're gonna cut the head. With a free VIP package to watch Canelo versus Triple G live in Las Vegas. Free tickets, free signed merch, free party at High Lounge, VIP access to the weigh-in. Big thanks to our buddies over at Stagefront for making this possible and partnering with us to go ahead and do this giveaway. You guys gotta check them out. They put together some really cool VIP packages for the fights. Marcos, how do I win this? Click on the link in the description on this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms. Winners are announced August 31st. Now get back to watching this video. What do you think this time at 140, like what difference are we gonna see in you compared to 135? Uh, if you can name some of the things that were holding you back at 135 that you felt that you couldn't fully do because of the weight cut. I'm much happier to your female. You know, I, um, a happier fighter is a dangerous fighter and a much a lucid fighter, really. So I just feel like my body is going to be more at, at peace, knowing that really it's uh, it's where it needs to be at the moment. You know, 140 is I feel great. You know, honestly, I think I'll, I'll be I'll be at 140 by tomorrow. So I have time to eat. I have time to enjoy. You know, that's why I did a little bit extra work today. You know, I just want to be ahead of schedule. You know, when you look back at what happened in the, the fight that you had with George with the uh, the ripped the esophagus, like, have you taken time to, like, really think about it and think, like, damn, like, I, I could have died. Like, I could have lost everything. Like, do you, do you ever, like, sit down and think about that? Like I said, like, boxing saved my life. So if I died doing what I love, so be it. Yeah. So be it. This is, uh, this is everything. We're all going to die. It's how we die. It's how we go. It's what we leave behind. It's what we, a lot of people are scared to die. That's why they fear the devil and they fear so many things. I ain't scared of death, bro. I gave my rose to death. You know what I'm saying? I gave my flower to death so it could give me an extra life in this world. And I thank God for that. You know? When you heard about what happened uh, with uh, Devin, how easily he beat George, were you surprised? Did you know that was going to happen? What were your thoughts? Because I saw an interview that you didn't see the fight. No, I didn't. Yeah. I, you know, honestly, I, I freaking, like I said, I rented a city bike in New York. And I was riding my bike with my headphones on and just riding in all around New York City by Times Square and everything, enjoying uh, and thanking God, really, just uh, thanking that he gave me a second chance at life. You know, because every doctor that sees that report, even before I fought 12 rounds strong, they even say, how the hell are you still here? They say it like this, and they say, you're either a beast or an active God, because that's just, there's no one that can survive that. No one. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that goes to show, not just, uh, that doesn't show anyone else. It shows me that I still have purpose in this life that I have to finish and I have to accomplish before I go. You know, um, the ones that we've lost in the past, those legends will never die. They will always forever live forever. And I will be in that book too. So whatever, whatever happens with me years to come or whenever God is ready to take me, my whole thing is about leaving that legacy and uh, leaving a good example to all the children out there, man. I mean, we're, we're, we're um, a lot of people in this world, man, they're, they're, uh, they're pushing this narrative, trying to show them something else. And it's like, that's not the way. Let the kids decide on their own. Let them figure it out on their own. Let them, let them experience their own life like we all did. You know what I'm saying? And then take it from there. So I, I just thank God that he gave me the opportunity to have a voice. And um, I, and it's all about what you do with that voice and the action that you bring to it. So come Saturday night, I'm gonna put everything that I got, all I got in there. And then um, everything that I'm speaking here, man, y'all gonna see the you're gonna see the the fruits of my labor and how the how the doors are gonna open even more after this. How does that fight look like at 140 if you were to fight George again? Because I would imagine you want that win back. He'll be the one dying this time. And I'll make sure of it. I drop him or anything like that. That fight was to come. I'll come and pick him up. I won't let the ref stop it. I want to kill him. Not, not really. You know what I'm saying? You want to put a beating on him, but gotta like, put a beating on him, a long one. You know what I'm saying? It's because of the the trash talk, the the long buildup, the cancellation, the the tension from that, or is it like more? No, oh, it's just uh, just the way it is. That's who I am. That's who I am. You know, um, I don't like uh, you know, I say it like this, like, how can I say? When you try to make an example of someone behind those doors, you just realize that they fucked themselves up because they gave you something that they need to see. You know what I'm saying? Cambosis had to do what he had to do. However, it's the things behind that that I'm not okay with. You know what I'm saying? So it's all about just moving forward and, um, yeah. Huh? That's for me to know and for you guys to find out. 
Yeah. He had told me that he had tried to reach out to you after the loss, That's and he sent you a message. That's a lie? Yeah. yeah. Ain't nobody talking to me. That's a lie. Yeah, he said he, that they told him to send you to his team. Someone from his team told him to send you a message because of, of, of what you were going through with the loss and with the injuries and all that. Nah, that's all just uh, talk, bro. I'm, uh, I'm always been real. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, we talk about uh, Pedro Campa, August 13th. Um, he's 34 and won, 23 knockouts. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a Mexican veteran, Mexican style, come forward type of fight. And it's all about just uh, pushing that needle. Yeah. All right, Teo, quickly, just in 10 seconds or less, if you and Devin were to fight at 140 pounds, what happens? Sign the contract first, and then we could talk about it. I mean, like, that's it. I don't want to talk about these guys, man. They, why am I going to give them something that they haven't even earned? They haven't earned it, bro. That's all played out, man. These guys are man-made. And I think I feel like all y'all know that because y'all under payroll, uh, under their payroll. Majority of y'all under their payroll. So y'all got to talk about these boys. I'm going to expose all of y'all, too, at the same time. I'm just going to do it in, in God's timing because I think it's flaw. I think it's messed up. I think it's I think it's just wrong how people got to pay to make themselves there. I didn't pay myself to make it here. I worked my ass to make it here. And that's what's going to last longer than them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they say it like this. Um, of course, fast, listen, fast success builds ego. Slow success builds character. And um, that's why even though they uh, they do what they do, they all want to beat Teofimo. And 